everyone and welcome to the Game Shed with me, Mark. And in today's video, I'm going to show you something amazing. Something I've been waiting ages to be able to say to you guys. There's good news and there's bad news. The good news is the PlayStation Classic has been hacked. Official. Uh, the bad news is that you cannot replace the games that are on the PlayStation Classic currently and you have to run these extra games off of a USB stick. So there's good and bad. I mean, it's it's not terrible, is it? It's great. You can play whatever games you want on your PlayStation Classic. That's what matters, right? So uh, in order to do this, you need a piece of software called Bleem Sync. Bleem Sync is awesome. Thank you so much to whoever made this. I will show the list in a minute. Um, it's not that difficult to do. It's pretty straightforward. And to be honest, um, I did it in about 10 minutes. So it's really easy. And I'm going to take you through the steps. So stick with me, guys. And I will show you exactly how you do this. So first things first, make sure you've got your PlayStation Classic hooked up, ready to go, uh, and the power not in it. Second thing, you need a USB stick. Now I went through a few of my USB sticks and I found there's a few little incompatibilities. Um, I had this lovely little 32 gig, tiny little USB stick thing lined up. I was like, yes, it's tiny and it didn't work. So that was a SanDisk, uh, I don't know what model it is. It was a 32 gig USB 3. Um, I then scrapped around, I was like, oh, man, i got to find a USB stick. So I found a old USB stick that I got given to me <laughs> from my old work. It's a load of rubbish. I was like, this is not going to work. If that new, nice new one is not going to work, then this definitely isn't. So, plugged it in. Lo and behold, it bloody works, doesn't it? So, that's what I'm going to use for this video. There is a list I'm going to show you shortly of compatible USB sticks uh, if you want to go out and buy like a 32 gig or a 64 gig USB stick, something like that. So the first thing I need you to do is plug your USB stick into your computer and format it. Formatting your USB stick is very simple. I've got mine right here. You just right click, format. Make sure you choose FAT32 as the file system right here. Look at this, it's a 1.86, it's only 2 gig this stick. Um, and then make sure the volume label is very clearly SONY in capital letters. Click start, click OK and your USB stick will be wiped, wiped clean. Make sure there's nothing on it guys, before you do that make sure there's nothing on it that you want to keep. I'm not being held responsible for you wiping your wedding photos off of a USB stick or something like that. Okay, so now you've got a blank USB stick, brilliant. Head on over to the Bleem Sync download URL that I'm going to chuck in the description below. So go and click on that. It will open up github.com Pat L Bleem Sync. There you go. This is the awesome guy, Pat Hartle, I think it is, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He's the awesome guy that figured this out and has uploaded it to GitHub. Um, there are some credits here at the bottom. Mad Monkey created the LOL hack, which makes all of this possible. Dan the Man 827 for the overmounting lessons. And Yifan Lu, why not? Why not? I ask you. Uh, there's a couple of, con there's a few contributors in there. There's Copcom, Maku, and Matrivs. Big up yourselves guys you've done an absolutely sterling job getting this done so quickly it's amazing uh next thing you want to do is head to the uh releases if you click on there you'll see here the latest release is 0.41 now the funny thing about this is i only did this yesterday for the first time um and it's it was 0 0.40 so this has literally been re released 12 hours ago. So just grab the latest version. Uh, let's see what is happening in this one. This is a maintenance release. A bug in the serial number detection from game images might have caused games to not be detected properly. To update, remove the root Bleem Sync folder and replace it with the one in the zip archive. Okay. Um, please use this spreadsheet for keeping track of any missing games. Okay, so there's some awesome stuff on this site, guys. If you're... If you're wondering about incompatibilities or problems or what have you, um, you can go, if I go here and click on issues, you can click here and look at the issues that people are getting and you can find the one that you might find. Um, this is also great because in here somewhere, I've actually opened it up in a separate tab, is the compatibility page. Uh, let me just refresh this and see how many USB sticks we can see in here now. 
there's quite a lot. Look, there's 50, 50 odd, 56, 56 USB sticks. So this will tell you uh, which ones work. Look, you can see works well, not encountered any in-game issues. That's a Samsung 128 gig USB stick. That would be very useful because you could fit a lot of games on there. Anyway, I'll link that page as well in the description below so you can check your USB stick if it doesn't work. Uh, for now, go to code. That was the releases. There is 10 releases, like I said before. There was 9 before, actually. Now there's 10. Uh, 0.41 is the one I'm going to go with, and I'm doing it in Windows. So if you're doing this on a Mac, download this one here. If you're doing it on a Linux machine, click that one there. So just click that, save that file, and once that's downloaded, it's uh, 57 megabytes, 57 megabytes. So it's not, not too massive, it's not too bad at all. Uh, my internet's relatively quick, but yours may take a little bit longer if you've got a slower internet, I don't know. Um, once it's downloaded, open that up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna unzip that. You can see here I've got the 0 0.40 saved. So I'm just gonna delete that one. Uh, let's chuck this one on my desktop and we can close that. Okay, so unzip this to wherever you want it to be. Uh, so I'm just going to unzip this to my desktop in a folder called Bleem Sync, which I've already created. Bleem Sync, here we go. So let's chuck that in there. Extract. And just like that, it's unzipped. There you go. So once you've unzipped everything into that folder, you can close that down. And then we have a Bleem Sync folder on our, wherever you want to save it. I've got it on my desktop. Right, so the first thing to do is gather yourself some games. Now, difficult subject that I can't really broach properly, but if you've got some kind of mechanism to put a PlayStation game into your PC, rip it onto your desktop as a Q and bin file, then you're good to go. You are good to go. I keep saying desktop, I mean PC. Um, I have a couple of games lined up. Let me just grab those. I think I put them in games. Yes, I have. Okay, so I've got two games. I've got Crash, obviously, a game that should have been on the console, and I've got Crash Team Racing, another game that should have been on the console. So I'm just going to grab those. I'm going to go back a step. I'm going to create a new folder called PS ISO and I'm going to chuck them in there because I want to se separate them okay so here's what you need to do you need the bin and the Q files that are present for a PS1 game the last thing you need here is a PNG it is a image of the cover so let me just open that up and you'll be able to see whoops there you can see what I've done there that's Crash Bandicoot the other thing that you need to make sure of is that all your files, all three files here, have the, exactly the same file name. Now I'm not talking about the end of the file name because it needs to be .q, .bin, .png, but the file name like that needs to be the same, otherwise this will not work. So that's a .q file, .bin, .png. Okay, so they've all got the same name, which is great. The next thing you need to do <clears throat> is head on back uh, let's do it from this folder over here. Let's open up another one. It'll make it easier, I promise. I'm going to minimize the USB stick for now because we'll copy that on later. So what you need to do is head on into the games folder. And I've already got two games folders in there which come pre-installed um, inside that folder. And what you'll see when you go into them is another folder called game data and then you'll see a bunch of files. Now, all these files here represent two games by the looks of things they are just literally just files that don't mean anything just chucked in there so you can see what the layout should be so at this point you can delete all of these files and then grab your crash bandicoot files okay so once they're copied in what you want to do is right click on the game config file then click edit and what you what will happen is a notepad will open up and there you can see what is quite obviously the name of the disc, the name of the game, the publisher, and the year. 
So the disk is the exact same name that we added before. So it's just Crash Bandicoot. Let me just grab that so that I don't make any mistakes. I'll copy and paste into there. Okay. The title is the game title. So you might want to put a space in it. And you might want to put USA or whatever you want. Um, but I just leave it like that. Then we've got what is Sony. I'm just going to put Sony for the publisher. And Crash Bandicoot was 1996. Click on File, click on Save. That will save the game config file. Now for the second game, I'm going to use CTR. I've already done most of the work in there, but let's copy that file name again. And we want to overwrite that and that. And then we'll end up with Crash Team Racing, Crash Team Racing, Crash Team Racing, Bin Q, PNG. Remember those three files, guys. So let's head on back to number two in our list. And you'll see there again, we can get rid of these SLUS files. They are just temporary. Copy in Crash Team Racing. <clears throat> Once again, edit the game file. And we want to put Crash Team Racing as the disk. There we go, Crash Team Racing. Crash Team Racing. It's another Sony one. Crash Team Racing was released in 1999. There is also a field here for the amount of players on the Crash Bandicoot game previously. I think I left it too. Uh, it doesn't actually matter, but it will show when you're looking at the game details. So if that bothers you, then simply head back to the other game, like I did before, edit that file, change it. Oh, it's already on one. What an idiot, it's already on one. Okay, that's fine. If you had messed up, you can always just go back into those game files and edit them again. Uh, so that's Crash Team Racing done, that's Crash Bandicoot done. Next thing to do on the list is to go into the Bleem Sync folder, go all the way down to the Bleem Sync application, this one, 106 kilobytes application. Uh, double click on that, and you will get Windows protected your PC. So click on more info and run anyway. What will happen is you'll get this box come up. And after a few seconds, it will go added game. It's very quick. You don't notice it. What you will notice is a new folder in the directory called system. This system file has a bunch of stuff that's been chucked in here. This system folder, sorry. Including the regional databases. And there's a whole load of stuff. I'm going to edit that with Notepad++. A whole load of stuff in there that's been chucked in. But you can see at the bottom, Crash Team Racing, Crash Bandicoot. That is it. So at this stage, all you need to now do is open up your USB stick. Again. Copy all those folders apart from that PS ISO one, obviously. You could have had that anywhere, by the way. You could have had that somewhere else on your machine. Copy all of those onto the USB in the root and let that finish. And like magic, it's done. Now that actually, in real life, took me bloody ages to copy onto there. And it's a great reason to use a decent USB 3 memory stick. So anyway, there is one more thing I want to show you before we plug this into the PlayStation Classic and I show you it booted up and playing the games. That is the fact that there are some two disc, multi-disc games out there. In order to run those games specifically, what you need to do is when you're editing the game file, you put a comma and then the name of the second disc. It is literally that simple. Comma, name of the second disc, but in this video, I don't actually have any two disc games, so I'm not going to be able to show you properly. But that's all you do. And then when you get prompted in the game to switch discs, you just press the open button as you would with the other games on, on the PlayStation. I think it's just Metal Gear Solid, isn't it? That, I think that's the only other game that's two disc on this system. That is how you do it. Very, very simple. Right, so we've got absolutely everything now. It's all on the memory stick. So let's eject this bad boy. Like that and I'm gonna plug it in to my PlayStation Classic so at this stage you can see I've got the power unplugged make sure you keep the power unplugged while you plug the USB stick into the second controller port that is how you currently do this there is a way down the line that you can have two player games but for now this is how you do it plug it into the second port like 
so as you can see there my lovely silver memory stick then we plug it in get some power into that bad boy and I'm gonna flick over onto my PlayStation screen I'm gonna show you what it looks like so here we go I'm gonna power on the PlayStation now and what you should see if you've done this right is that light should start flashing see that okay so there we go finally it did load um, I had to reboot the PlayStation that was the only thing I had to do to get that working uh, not sure why sometimes on the first boot it does go a bit funny uh, and I can't explain it so if you get that if you get that blank screen then just either bear with it or reboot it and it should come up like so look at this I have two games here I have Crash Team Racing and I have Crash Bandicoot as we loaded onto the USB stick uh, there's the cover that is where Sony comes in you can see just below Crash Bandicoot and the year it came out and how many players it is there is a slight difference as you can see between the two so first off let's load Crash Bandicoot and I'll show you that up and running and I can show you that it runs like a dream so I've not noticed any major issues with this playing uh, these games that are on the USB stick I figure that if you had a lot on there it may be better to have a higher quality USB stick um, also I haven't tested out having a massive USB stick yet so there's a there's a few things I haven't tested out yet but just for the basics this is a 2 gig stick it is a very generic USB stick and look at this I've loaded the wonderful Crash Bandicoot so let's start the game I'll show you how it runs and then I'll head on over to Crash Team Racing and I'll show you that as well. So there he is, Mr. Crash. Look at that. It runs beautifully. Look at this. I've heard a lot of people saying that the SNES Classic runs PS1 games just as well as this. Uh, so I'm going to actually look to cover that at some point and try and figure that one out as well. Um, but so far so good. I mean look at this. It runs really nice. There's no delay on the controller at all. I'm not noticing any major issues whatsoever. So I'm happy with that. I hope that would make you happy how this is running. And I've loaded the US version of this game so I get the full Hertz experience rather than some of the PAL games that were loaded onto the PS Classic. Right. So as normal you just literally hit the reset button on your PS Classic to go back to the main menu. You will find it also creates resume points which is amazing. Look at that. So I've got absolutely zero problems there with coming back to the game later. Second game, Crash Team Racing, came out in 1999 this one. What a great game it was. Naughty Dog. There you go, NaughtyDog.com. That website is definitely still up and running. Here we go, look at this. Crash Team Racing. I'm just going to go into arcade. Single game, one player. Look at this. Beautiful, just how I remember it. Let's -a go! And he got a boost start. Look at that. Doesn't get much better than that. This is wonderful. What a great game. I'd almost forgotten how much fun this game was, and I cannot believe there wasn't a crash game in the list of games on the PS Classic. I've gone off the edge. There you go. Uh, let's head on back to my main screen here, and I'm going to open up the Bleem Sync folder here. And what you'll find is, if you look through the releases, it will tell you what's been added. So there's auto automatic metadata scraping. If BleemSync detects no game, INI is present for a game, it will attempt to download the information and game cover. So it will try and do that automatically. If you've not downloaded the game cover, it will try and do it automatically. So I actually added the game covers myself because I want a little bit of control over that. But you can just leave it and it will do it for you apparently. Uh, the other thing they've added is two player controller support. What I'll do is I will cover that in another video once I have checked it out and made sure that it works okay. But for now that is Bleem Sync Air yeah, up to 0.4.1 and I'm sure there's going to be many many releases to come where you can probably have some kind of GUI to load those games onto a USB stick and so you can play them on your PS1 Classic. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this has been useful. Um, I I will do more videos like this covering the PS1 Classic uh, as there is definitely a lot still to come. So thank you so much again. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you next time.